Spider-Man's organic webs are created from a highly specialized set of glands hidden under his wrist that create a very unique kind of silk that would totally make regular spiders jealous. In Spider-Man's wrist would likely be complex muscle structures or sphincters either located near the openings of the silk producing glands or connected to them while they are housed in his forearms. I mean he does make a lot of web fluid. Then by exerting or contracting these muscles Spider-Man could cause the glands to propel webbing through a specialized duct or tube system and out of the openings in the sphincters in his wrist, similar to the spinnerets found in spiders. Additionally, at the openings of Spider-Man's special web tubes, he likely has a highly specialized structure found in spiders called a spigot. Much like the nozzle on a fire hose, the combination of Peter's motor control and spigots would allow him to precisely control the pressure and flow that is exerted on the fluid in his web glands, and the speed that the fluid is allowed to be expelled at. What you might not expect is this complex system allows spiders and Peter to also adjust the thickness of their webs, its texture, and even stickiness of the webs on the fly. The way Spider-Man's webs are produced in the first place involves the use of specialized silk glands that, for the sheer amount of web fluid we see Peter expel over the course of the movies, are likely larger in size, and therefore are more likely to be housed in the distal regions of his forearms, where much like Wolverine's claws, he can contract the muscles of his forearms to varying degrees. However, these glands contain a special type of cell that isn't found most anywhere else, known as secretory cells, cells that are solely responsible for creating the liquid silk itself by synthesizing, folding, and packaging long chains of amino acids together into a substance known as fibroin, or otherwise liquid silk. However, this liquid silk is very different than the end result we see Spidey shoot at the bad guys or swing around with, as it's literally a semi-liquid solution composed mainly of water and the fibroin proteins, much like the fluid we see the other Spider-Man keep in their web shooters. However, as this substance is forced out of the glands and travels through the nearby ducts, the water is removed by another special set of cells, transforming the liquid into a more solid, thread-like form. But much like the other Spider-Man's web shooters, it's not until the liquid solution itself makes contact with the air that it finally undergoes a final rapid polymerization process that triggers a process known as solidification or solid-state transformation as the different proteins in the web fluid align and create strong intermolecular bonds to create the familiar web material we have all come to know and love. A question you might be asking yourself is how does Peter manage to shoot his webbing as fast as we've seen him do? Well, this comes down to a force known as hydrostatic pressure, a means that refers to the pressure exerted per unit of area by a fluid at equilibrium, meaning when everything's in a state of balance and otherwise in a state of rest due to the weight of the fluid itself. Then when Peter contracts his enhanced muscles, he can and suddenly exert so much pressure on these glands that he quickly disrupts their equilibrium, forcing the liquid silk out of the glands into the surrounding tubes, where they then come to the nozzle-like spigot whose narrow diameter creates further resistance against the flow of the liquid silk, allowing the pressure to build further and expel the silk in a high-powered and controlled manner until the pressure is released. It's worth noting that different spiders have evolved over time to be able to produce different types of silk that all vary in their strength, elasticity, and stickiness that are suited for different tasks. And our Spider-Man is no exception, except for the fact that he seems to be able to do it all. Whether it's creating different webs to shoot at their prey, capture a falling helicopter, or simply swing around with, all of these webs must contain fibrine as their core component. However, the specific composition and arrangement of these fibrine proteins can vary between spider species and the different glands located in their bodies, resulting in different types of silk being produced in each gland, each with their own distinct properties. In addition to fibrine, silk may also contain other proteins and compounds depending on the specific type of silk and its intended purpose. For example, dragline silk, which is a lot stronger and is used for the main frame of a web and structural support, typically contains additional proteins called spider 
hydrorines that contribute to both the elasticity and toughness of the silk. Acidiform silk is characterized by its stickiness and is typically used to wrap and immobilize anyone caught in it, while capture spiral silk is an incredibly adhesive silk used in the sticky sections of a web. Specifically when it comes to Spider-Man's web swinging, in this instance his web is somehow spun into the shape of a rope. Much like real life spiders, this is likely done through a similar process called spinning. As Spider-Man goes to shoot something akin to a dragline web, it's likely that he adjusts the pattern of the silk deposition, or the way he releases and arranges the webbing to wrap around itself, controlling the speed and direction of the silk threads as they are expelled, essentially guiding them like a spider to where they need to be. Remarkably, this entire process of silk production is done by reading the spider's specific set of DNA that provides for the exact sequence the amino acids need to be put together in to build whatever type of web fluid the gland holds, which accounts for the obvious fact that the Peter Parker we met did have his DNA altered differently than the other Spider-Men's, but also means that he likely contains many to all of the different glands responsible for producing the different types of silk that are specifically encoded in his DNA. So in other words, Peter too has a massive leg up on what he can make his webs do, but there's still one question in our story that remains unanswered. How does Spider-Man produce so much web fluid? Yes, for all of you out there that are screaming because he's not real at the computer and otherwise completely miss the entire point of this channel as a means for the rest of us to learn more about science and be encouraged to learn about this crazy world we live in, in here lies a remarkable fact about the world's favorite superhero. Spider-Man's enhanced physiology means that specifically the guy's metabolism is way off the charts. Metabolism refers to the chemical reactions that occur in the body to both break down and create molecules to sustain life itself. And in Spider-Man's case, how quickly his body can replenish the web fluid in his glands. Spider-Man has been depicted as having to eat larger amounts of food than a regular person, which is part of the reason why he has heightened endurance, strength, and agility. Because of faster working metabolism allows him to break down and create the energy required for him to sustain his physical performance. And it would also contribute to his ability to heal from injuries much faster like other superpowered individuals we've gone over. But above this, his metabolism would allow for a highly active cellular production system within his special spider glands to generate web fluid at a highly efficient and rapid rate. He just needs to eat a lot depending on the day he's had. But if none of this was very interesting, then I saved an interesting fact for last. Spider Silk is known to have a tensile strength of 1 to 4 gigapascals, or otherwise is able to withstand 1 to 4 billion newtons of force per square meter, which is over double the stress level steel is able to withstand, while also being able to significantly stretch and move around without losing much of its strength, allowing Spider Silk to absorb and dissipate energy. With Spider-Man specific webbing being known to be far stronger than that of regular spiders. So if you want to see how ridiculous other characters' powers are, or what it would be like to web swing around the city, then you're going to want to check out this video. See you in the next one.